Today's show is brought to you by BrowTalk.com. B-R-A-U-T-A-G, the new BrowTalk premium brewing system is a high quality Herm system developed by yours truly to take your brewing to the next level. And by yours truly, I mean Todd and James. The Brow Talk consists of three premium stainless steel 20 gallon kettles, perfect for brewing 15 gallon batches, and each comes equipped with durable ball valves and easy to use stainless steel quick connects. The Brow Talk controller is an innovative, no nonsense controller developed to make your brew day better. It's easy to understand, which makes it easier for you to fully control the brewing process. Dial in your temperatures with ease and control the entire process at the flick of a switch or the push of a button. The Brow Talk also comes with two premium centrifugal pumps and all the necessary cables conveniently labeled just for you. Go to browtalk.com and learn more about our special introductory offer, which includes $500 off MSRP, free shipping, and a ton of free add-ons, such as a 15-gallon recipe kit of your choice, three packs of liquid imperial yeast, a premium refractometer, pH meter and testing kit, a one-year membership to Brewer's Friend Premium, Sandstep Sanitizer, Brew Clean, and more. Head over to browtod.com to find a list of our retail partners and let us help make your brew day better. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Choosing your hops for a smash recipe, headspace when filling bottles, duplicate brew days but different results, and what to do with swollen pats of liquid yeast. This is Homebrew Happy Hour, Episode 242. Welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions as well as discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question that you would like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325 305 61 07. I am your host, Joshua Stubing. Today, I am joined by the Director of Operations at HomebrewSupply.com. Right over there, Mr. Laddick Joe Ermis, as well as beneath me, he is the resident chief keg washer and president of KegConnection.com, Mr. Todd Burns. Gentlemen, thank you all for joining me. Hey, I'm the keg king. What's going on? You are on all here? the king of kegerators. Is what keg, king of kegerator. On the last yes. episode, that's what somebody called him. Someone me. did call him that, uh, Joe. My new title. His yeah. new title is king of kegerators. Uh, I like it. <laughs> you know, we'll have to, I don't know, have a battle royale with you and some other retailers uh, for that status. You just have to okay, I'm, I will always be the chief keg washer. I'll <laughs> you never get away from that. always be chief keg washer. Joe, how are you doing, man? Doing well, doing well. It's been a little while. It has been a little yourself? while. And it's actually, it's been a real long time since you've been on with someone else. Usually, yeah. I have to throw a Hail Mary. I'm like, Joe, please do the show. Yeah. Please, Joe, do the <laughs> show. Because uh, this week, so when people are listening to this, I'm at the beach. James is back in the office, and y'all are in the office. But when we're recording this, James is at the beach, and I'm in the office. And so we got you hooked up with all the equipment so you could do it from up there uh, as opposed to – I forgot to bring all the gear for us. to. Do. Normally when I'm here at the office, we'll do the show together in person the same room same you know we, we had just have multiple cameras set up or at the ranch or, or at the ranch or something yeah but i, for, I forgot that you're gonna be at the be- i gotta get my beach shot back <laughs> that's in right. so I can be at the beach yeah look too. todd's at the beach too look isn't that so nice of todd to join yeah. me what beat who painted that and uh what- helen alexander painted that and, and from the and, umbrellas uh, is it's, it's south padre hard to see it. there's umbrellas and uh yeah it, well, I was gonna say the grassy that, dunes, grassy dunes, and umbrella. That grassy look, dunes. That, that looks like it looks like South Padre to me. It. I was gonna say it looks a lot like a Texas beach. It does. Todd, do you do you know the artist? I do know her. Yes, yeah, she's my mom's best friend. Oh, really? Cool. Uh huh. Interesting. Well, yeah, we went to. Uh, she had an art show, and I went to the art show and bought a couple of pieces. So. 
That that was very nice of you. I don't. I I my mom has talented friends, and I I just don't I buy stuff from them. Uh, they don't actually sell anything. Or you know what? One of them I think does one of those multi level marketing things, but <laughs> <laughs> but I don't buy from her on that. Uh, that's a whole different episode. Uh, but anyways, in the small talk part, I don't have a lot except for again the beach trip. Um, I'm hoping everything's going well while I'm at the beach right now. It's, I'm I'm speaking to future Josh. I hope you're having a good time at the beach, future Josh. I hope this. Episode are y'all published. doing Port Aransas? Or we South are, Padre? yeah. Me, Port Ar- me, Port Ar- and my Ar- folks, and my brother and his family are going nice. to be That'll there. Be fun. It will be. We get. We are getting the same beach house we got last year, which has a pool. It's real close walk. As, as a, if you're at Port Aransas, you're probably already a close walk to the beach, right? Yeah, That's, I but, love Port Aransas. I yeah. love Port Aransas. I hadn't been there in a while, though. I'm considering. I a beach trip. I used to take uh, the skim board every year growing up, and I have a really nice skim board that I got as an adult, but I've been not taking it because I'm wor- like, no, I'm not going to get to use it because with my little ones, you know, you're, I'm trying to spend more time Time's with Time's occupied. Yeah, Time's totally. occupied. I've got, got one too, actually. I pulled it out when we got that snow up here. I pulled it out in the yard and was doing some runs in the, in the snow in the yard. Did so it work? It's like a fiberglass yeah, one. Yep. Yeah, it, it worked a little bit. I, it was hard to get too much like you know speed generated but yeah it was well, fun you're, you're, fun your, wa- your wife's gonna be there right yeah you, know, you, you talking about the skim board or to watch the kids <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you said you couldn't skim board because you had to watch the kids but your wife's gonna be there she yeah. can watch the kids yeah no I'm gonna be you, you know what your your older one definitely will actually your middle one too would yeah. probably love the skim well, board that's i was I, gonna say there's two of them are the age where they're ready to learn probably. they are esther are the middle one the nine-year-old my oldest is 11 she's the more daredevil and that's another reason why i think my wife doesn't want me to bring it is because she's afraid esther's gonna break her neck on it hurt some, yeah, hurt yeah. Herself. It, it's easy. no they it's hard, really hard for them to break their neck at the beach at that age i mean oh, how, yeah, how could yeah, you yeah. fall that hard esther broke her clavicle when she was three surfing my mom's recliner and then she fell <laughs> but uh we yeah stopped. but they heal quick when they're oh, young. Yeah, 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 yeah. we yeah, just stopped be fine. we just stopped letting my mom babysit them that's all but well, no, we didn't even do that. We were like, yeah, go back to grandma's, break another clavicle or the other side. <laughs> Walk it off. Walk it off. Um, I did have a question. To, I forgot to bring it up last week. We've mm-hmm. been brewing only, all of us actually on the show right now, the only batches we've been brewing the last two months had been those test batches for the pale ale. Joe, do you have a brew day coming up where you're brewing something other than a pale ale to test hops? I don't have one planned, but I need to get one planned. Um I haven't I haven't really laid anything out for myself yet, but um, I need to get something planned. We actually had a a guy call to ask if we were going to brew tomorrow. I had told him that we've got some people out of town, so likely not, but maybe the week after. So maybe week after if we have James yeah, help watch the great. phones and stuff. Yeah, maybe I'll get a brew in next week. Tom. Yeah, that, we haven't done one in a while. I think I, next time I brew, I'm going to brew a pale ale just to annoy James. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That would, and you know it would. It would Double actually. dry hops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joe, you need to, uh, your batch that Todd has on tap of that Hydra you brewed, yeah, it, it that it turned out good up there. It was different than it tastes yeah. different than it was down here. I think here. maybe the one here maybe got a little oxygen in it or something. It was well, a little funky. Yeah, but but the one I, all of them actually turned out real good. You need to come. Oh, I can't serve that one right now. I've got to fix that when we get home well, before we do the thing tomorrow. Why? What happened? Uh, I think my CO2 tank went empty and I don't oh. think it was that low. So I obviously have a leak. So we need to do a, we're, we need to put a new one on there and then, uh, test hit, all the lines to the see, where it's, see where it's leaking. Todd, yeah. if you need me to test the beer lines tonight, I'm at your service. I will test okay. them all. We'll drink as much as you need. We could to. do a video on that even. Cause yeah. we, we get that call quite a bit, it's you know, I hooked up bad. my system and I, uh, went out of CO2 the next day. That's kind of not thing, a bad. You know? <laughs> so you just went from Josh drinking beer to just working. I'm yes. sure that he's hating <laughs> on you right now. Yeah, that's no, why you the, pay me the big bucks. The, the, the video, the vi- <laughs> video production is like the funnest thing we do, in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's seriously. Okay. Let's. We know. I'm pretty confident we have a leak. I have water in a bottle ready to spray because I tested all my gas or lines. Soap, when soapy I put rag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like 
Okay, perfect. Well, that's another video okay. coming out. We did. People were pleasantly surprised when we posted the video for the taste testing. And we also have that event faucet video coming out. We have people like it, Ty. We need to just do more of these like quick bit uh, videos content, on and how to's yeah. the content. People, people enjoy it, especially since Good. we haven't done a recipe recap in forever. Partially my fault, mainly Todd's fault because he's been making us brew the same pale ale. And that hop testing video was kind of like a recipe recap, but not really because it wasn't the like I would consider a recipe recap, even though it's not technically a recipe. It's like uh, we we are we are looking at making some recipes incorporating those hops. So in the future, there there may be some recipes like that. And they are all available. I forgot to mention that on last week's episode, but it was all over the video. They're available at homebrewsupply.com, catconnection.com. Go to the hops. You'll see them in under hop pellets. All the hang. They're really easy to distinguish, too, because they've got kind of like a unique pictures uh, yeah, nice for the thumbnails yeah so. they're baseball yeah, nice card artwork. looking they're real cool they, right you, they, you can tell it's a good putting, way to put it yeah. listen i i love that beer i mean i i say that beer i love those beers i i've really enjoyed every night going and having a little taste of each one and i just keep finding more flavors in them and i like that recipe i like the way it highlights uh, we, i think we have a smash question today and that's pretty much this wasn't exactly a smash because we had a well, Josh's was a smash, right? No, because no, we had be, two hops. I was going to say right. it wasn't because I had bittering hops, Magnum. Uh, yeah, but we, you almost made it a smash when you left the, uh, <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, when you left the, the grain out. I did let the caramel out, yeah. I mean, oh, it was, talk- yeah, it was close to a smash. It just had a little bit of, of caramel malt, basically, for some coloring and sweet. Well, but not know. Josh's. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there was one that we brewed without the caramel. <laughs> I like the collective use of we. Yes, Joe, we messed it up. It wasn't me. It's a group effort around It was a here, group brother. effort. Jo- uh, Todd was there. <laughs> Todd, why didn't you make sure it was in there, you idiot? God. Um, I only asked him five times if he put all. Are you sure you put all the grain? He really there? did. You know what? We've talked about this on every podcast for like the last five podcasts. Yeah, and next week, we- though, next week we're going to have Scott Mast from Hangem High. And he also, I won't drop the name yet because... Uh, we're not sure, but another guest might be on with him who's kind of behind these proprietary hops uh, if if they're available. So next week, we'll have a couple of fun guests on that episode, which nice. when, I, when I say next week, I, when for our sake internally, I mean in two weeks, because, you know, again, I'm at the beach right now. Pla- what time is it? It's like by the time you're listening to this, people should be 11 a.m. I'm smashed with five cigars in my mouth. <laughs> and um, I'm on a skim board. Ooh, but anyway, uh, that that will be fun. We have a lot going on. But let me get the show going. We have some listener feedback. We kind of addressed it last week with James. Uh, he brought it up. He goes, oh, there was a, a, a person who had left this comment. And I said, oh, thanks for doing that. I'm going to actually I'll, I'll look for some other listener feedback for next week's show. And then I didn't go through all the listener feedback because we recorded this like right after. So let me let me get to the listener feedback part. And then we'll get Joe's It's opinion. time for... Listener feedback. I don't know if you've heard that bumper yet, Joe. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Listener feedback, Joe. It's it's my favorite part. It, uh, this was from J.K. Marut on YouTube, and he wrote, I cannot believe you don't clean your disconnects. That spring in there is a total hop catcher, so if you were doing any sort of dry hopping, it's going to be loaded, and no amount of brew clean is going to make that go away once it's there. I clean my out every time i run anything hoppy through them he was in reference joe to we had a question we, we, we answered this on the last part well i want joe but i don't know but i want joe's opinion too because joe is more relevant because joe does dry hop in a keg and joe okay, and joe you. does yeah. a bunch of hoppy beers in the keg. the the premise is uh we had a question about maintenance on cm becker disconnects and james was like soaking them and brew clean a powdered brewer cleanser will will pretty much suffice 99% of y'all. You don't worry about it. I don't ever do it. And then this guy brought up a good point where Man, if I'm doing anything really hoppy, I de- I need to because I'm going to start noticing the effects. Hops get like stuck in there. Like break the disconnect completely right. apart, yeah. soak it, and then, yeah. yeah. Now, you, you again, you're the hop head of my inner circle of brewers that I know. Do, yeah. do you usually do that with your with your disconnects, or have you not had issues? Well, Todd may not like me for saying this, but the one of the biggest reasons when I started brewing with my roommate, we actually switched to using Sankey kegs because we had issues with dry hopped beer clogging the quarter-inch draw you know, liquid 
dip tube on yeah. on the ball lock pin lock style kegs um and we actually noticed it getting clogged before it even hit the disconnect most of the time it get clogged up the post or the, or the again the dip tube itself so the sankey kegs have like a half inch dip tube so it's like nothing gets clogged um so i would if you're if you do a lot of hoppy especially like dry hopped beers where you can expect to have you know even though it may be small, you may have some hot particles in there. It's not a, not a bad idea. What I do typically is when I go, when I float a keg or I go to fill a new keg with my home brew, you, you generally you're going to wash and sanitize that keg anyway. So what I do is, you know, with the, with the cleaner in that keg, I run it through my line for a couple minutes, you know, and then run some rinse through and then the same thing with sanitizer. So I'm sure that has to help. Um, if you do that every time you, you change your keg, um, but, you know, even with that kind of precaution in mind, you may may not hurt, you know, by any means to to break them down every once in a while and 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 soak them. My solution was just brew Kolsch, baby. Just brew and serve Kolsch. <laughs> right. You don't yeah. got to worry about it. Life is good. <laughs> and then Todd, I don't remember Todd said something like, woo, woo, I like turtles or something. I don't remember what Todd said. Uh, but you had your input. James did, too. I just I included it, Todd, because, like I said, jo- Joe you'll dry hop and keg you don't care you'll 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 you like to i hop. hesitate dry hopping in a, in the keg oh okay what about, what about yeah. using, okay what about uh using a bag and dry hopping in a keg joe yeah that may be that would be the way to go if you kind of like if you have to dry hop in the keg but i have had uh bad experience with especially with pellets i guess i haven't never i haven't done like whole cone in a keg but with pellets i mean they break up and i've you know took a big drink and had green all in my teeth you know from hot particles so Me uh, you too. know crunching them and <laughs> like crunching them up and stuff it's not a you well, know and that lasted the first maybe five six pours right, and right it you know it wasn't the whole keg but it was still not a you know great experience yeah yeah swallowing or uh, flossing out hops is not yeah the fun it's thing a to they're strong yeah when they're you know when they're that concentrated in your mouth yeah yeah absolutely yeah, don't chew up a hot pellet yeah no. yeah they're gross yeah todd you have something important to take uh you, you're on your phone i said i thought i heard a phone ringing in the background but it wasn't mine a buzzing maybe uh so i, I mine. put mine on do not disturb but it wasn't my phone oh it wasn't it wasn't already i'm glad that that reminded you um so, so one of you has your phone buzzing and, and you don't want to admit it, do you? I've got Josh? my volume turned all the way down, but it, yeah, it, it may have been my vibration. You I didn't it hear it, phone. but I'm deaf. Maybe that frequency range is, uh, I, I can't hear it anymore, but I saw you Todd. I, I, you almost put your glasses on, I think. Um, but thank you. Anyways, <laughs> thank you for that feedback again. Uh, like Todd mentioned last week, he got after me when I didn't find a new feedback. And also he got after me because I didn't play one off a of voicemail. So if you really want to get on Todd's good side and have us play your feedback on a future episode, leave a voicemail at 325-305-6107. You'll know you called the right number when you hear my voice greet you immediately after you dial. So moving on, we've got four questions for you all this week. The first one was a text message to 325-305-6107 from our buddy Adam, who wrote Wrote in when creating a smash recipe, which hop would you pick for an IPA? My plan is to keep this easy, hence the smash, but I still want an IPA if possible. Smash is a single malt and single hop. The A, the the first the the A for and so single malt and single hop. Um, I know the only smash I've ever brewed is that one James did. That's the American ale. And it's part of like that whole complete kit that we sell where it comes with, uh, it's an extract and it comes with the kettle. It comes with everything. Right. And that turned out real good. It's very straightforward. Joe, is it possible to do an IPA as a smash given that a lot of IPAs are very Mm -hmm. hop, uh, variety, right? Like they add a lot of hops, but what would you suggest to this guy? That would be a good IPA. Yeah, but there, for, there's commercial versions, smash versions of IPAs, right? Uh, I would imagine so. I would think most breweries that are going to use a single hop will probably use a couple different uh, types of malt um, just to try and get a bit more of a balanced malt profile. Oh, uh, that's, yeah, that's true. Single but, hop, I guess. Yeah, yeah. A single hop is pretty common. Like one of the most common ones you're going to find is uh, the uh, zombie dust. It's all citra. 
Um, but I'm sure, uh, you know, I think they use some crystal and probably like some carapils or something too. Uh, but you can easily, we do have like a couple, I think, uh, smashes on our recipe. I mean, on our site recipes. Um, we have a mosaic, uh, you know, the mosaic IPA may not be a smash, but not, I know yeah. for sure we have a galaxy smash. Oh, that's um, right. And that would be one of the hops that I think that's like one of the like premier hops to to use i would i would say i would look at hops that are dual purpose so like bittering and uh aromatic hops and you can use a little bit at the beginning for bittering to get that kind of actual bitterness and then add more towards the end for the aroma and the flavor uh so things like you know citra amarillo um uh, Mosaic, Galaxy, Vic Secret, uh, pretty much all of the new hops that we added, the Hang 'em High, those would all work well. Um, yeah, but anything that you're you're gonna find that's gonna be like in the eight to eight plus IB, uh, you know, alpha acid percentage range, I think would work pretty well. Um, and it's really gonna depend on what you're going for. So like something citrusy, you know, obviously like citra, um, or if you're looking for something like lemony, you know, which I guess is technically citrus, but uh there's lemon drop hop. So there's um I would I would look at some of like the dual purpose hops and then kind of their descriptors and then kind of maybe pick something that sounds like up your alley. This is one of those times when I, I'm obligated to drop this thing I say a million times again, but it's like the best time ever to be alive as as a home brewer because like you just listed off the top of your head like a dozen that were like, like this. You can, oh, there's you, easily a dozen or, or, well. where and yeah. where like you said, what do you want out of it? Do you want more orange peel kind mm. of taste? Do you want grapefruit? Yeah. Do you want stone lemony? fruit? Do you want yeah, stone exactly. fruit? Exactly. Right. Like there's a lot of options where uh, thankfully for Adam he can get whatever he wants out of it and still keep it simple and still keep it a smash. Sure. Now sure. for that IPA, the base malt being what typically? Um, I really like a Maris Otter as the base because it's kind of one of the base malts with a little bit more kind of oomph behind it. It's got to have a little bit more toastiness to it. Um, but you know, Pilsner works great. It's going to be kind of like the, like the, uh, kind of the mildest, but you know, Pilsner two row pale ale, any of that works great. Todd, uh, you you're you know brewing IPAs when you're brewing off of like our website. When you've been going through all the the stuff on the website, have you brewed any of the smash ones from like that Galaxy Smash? When you said that, Joe, I immediately thought, you know what? I've never had that Galaxy. I remember was it two years ago they had a shortage from. Yeah, uh, that's th- what I was about to say. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean they've that's one of the hops that's been kind of hit or miss availability wise for. Last, and, yeah, and it's a mixture, it's isn't it a mixture of high mm-hmm. demand, but also they had some harvest issues at some point? Yeah, I think there was like a hurricane or something in New okay. Zealand, some kind of natural disaster that wiped out a big right. bunch of the crop. Have you had a beer with it before? Have you had Dallas? Oh, yeah. Okay. How, yeah, yeah, how is, is that a good a recipe? Hop. Oh. It's a great hop. Well, that recipe in particular is really good too, but um, Galaxy's featured in like one of the New England IPAs that we sell. Um Maybe even another recipe or two, but it's it's one of my favorite, absolute favorite hops. Uh, Maybe citrusy, tropical. It's got kind of a it's got a mm. lot going on, similar to like a mosaic or something like that. Now I want one for the beach. Um, maybe maybe we haven't decided August is uh, or August is August. Is, I have a speech impediment. Uh, recipes for the Trub Club. Maybe that'd be good for one of them. We'll, we'll, we'll think about it. But the Galaxy Smash, it, the artwork. I remember redoing the artwork for the yeah. listing on it on Cat Connection and thinking. Like this, you know, this is right up my alley in regards to the artwork. Now, I didn't look mm-hmm. at the beer, like what it said in it. I'm, I'm the sucker that falls for artwork on stuff when you're selling me something. Like, it yeah. you know, it could be a me pe- too. Honestly, <laughs> when I go to the beer store, it's like, what? Dang, that label, that can label exactly. looks really cool. You exactly. Know? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try that right now. What I'm is this? This, good. <laughs> Bel- this Belgian triple. Oh yeah, that's totally my. Or this Hefeweizen. Oh, that's totally right. my favorite. Not, but wait till they start putting those fancy labels on sours, bro. Oh, they already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, I. Uh, oh, what was it? Somebody, somebody wrote me recently saying something about. I guess, I guess some Austin brewery is doing a limited run on on uh, some sour thing. I have to. I'm going to butcher like the text or the email the person sent. But long story short, they were, they didn't tell me what it was. Like, hey, have you tried the whatever the name was? So like, no, I've never heard of it. And they're like, oh, it's delicious. Da-da. And so I just searched real close. Like, hey, hey, that's a sour. How dare you? To, <laughs> it wasn't to- the. Uh, a, uh, shoot, I'm gonna butcher it now. Atrial rubicle, or what I think is mm, it might Chester have been. I, like most famous beer. Uh, no, okay, I think they're well, about to well, do a release. 
Oh, maybe that, that maybe that is exactly what it is. If they're about to do a release, because that's what it was in reference to. It was like, don't miss out on this release. Oh, yeah. oh my God. It's that's the, the one that like people in Austin like go to Home Depot and hire like day laborers Stop. to come with them so they can get <laughs> their bottles. Basically, they pay them to to uh, get extra bottles because, you know, you're limited to like one or two to bottles one, on, right. on those releases. Yeah, Jester, uh, they are the apple, right, of Austin beer making. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're, like, they're like the most internationally known brewery here in central texas absolutely sure. yeah yeah they are and they're doing really good stuff too i forget their brewmasters her, her name but they're doing really good stuff over there jester king yeah if you're especially if you're into farmhouse which is and they've got, i was gonna say they got that farm well they've got that farm now too and they do like uh they, they grow they're growing a lot of their own grain and like uh have a little like pizzeria and yeah. stuff now uh, that's awesome uh so adam wrapping up your question i have a oh, little, you, oh. you never have you asked me my my uh my opinion. Yeah, what's you your never hop, let me actually your favorite answer. Hop, <laughs> no, I, I actually I, I wanted to stop you because I, I couldn't remember the name of it. I had to look it up because I had a really good smash the other day. It's Lone Pint Yellow Rose, oh, a, a yes. Magnolia Brewery. We have that clone on our site too. Okay, okay. That, that beer is exceptionally so good. good. And really? It is, uh, I, I I wasn't sure what it was. I couldn't remember. I had it of all places on tap at Schlotsky's. Nice. Can you believe that? I didn't even know they sell beer. I was going to say, yeah, what Schlotsky's? Uh, it's beer? Mosaic is what they use. Yeah. Wait, what yeah. Schlotsky's? Pilsner the- and Mosaic in Brownwood. He said in Brownwood. What? I don't yep, even. I don't have, think, I, I've been reading about it forever. I've been wanting to go there because I had it somewhere else a while back, and and I was really impressed with it. So I, I walk in and I have it on tap there. So I, I stop at the one in Lamb Passes on my drive up frequently. They don't. Mm-hmm. They don't have beer on tap there. They have. They. Yeah. Have, I think they have bottles, but it was like. Well, I mean, it is like a. It's a franchise, right? So certain. Oh, good point. It is certain franchise. franchises You're may right. have the yeah. liquor license or whatever. People who are listening. But, but yeah, I remember when Yellow Rose came out uh, here. You know, obviously here in Texas, that's where the breweries in Magnolia. But uh, we couldn't get enough. We were buying it off the shelf, and like you know, we that was when we were really starting to get to know the the liquor store owners, and like we were having like their delivery dates, like. It memorized so we'd go and see if they were able to get some on that delivery it was a wild time that's hilarious yeah, yeah. very very good beer I, I, so maybe mosaic is a good choice but very good choice I, I really i really like citra i just it's one of those hops i feel like is i don't know i, I just guess i love that flavor it's dependable so. citra by itself sometimes sometimes it can turn me off a little bit it's like it was really one of my favorites especially mm-hmm. when it's combined with like mosaic right, or right. galaxy or something but i don't know citra by itself sometimes i'll get a little like cat piss aroma from it and it's a I little love, i love a good cat piss <laughs> aroma <laughs> yeah, in some, my beer see, sometimes it's good yeah Depends on the cat. Yeah. Depends on the cat. Yeah. yeah. What are we talking about? A tabby, uh Siamese, like yeah. You need to be more specific, man, because when I'm tasting it as a judge, I want to know what kind of cat this piss is from. Like that South the South Park. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's, yeah, I'll have a link to that episode. No, I won't. But I do, Adam, have a link to uh mini hops uh, or just a landing page that you can click on in the show notes. If you're on YouTube, it'll be in the description below. Or if you're at homebrew happy com it's in the actual like article post below the play button in the video that we have here so go look at those hops the hang them high ones are the ones listed first on that link because like joe said i'm pretty confident those hang them high most of them would work dual purpose and um, as having just taste tested them i really enjoyed them especially that the one i brewed the mackinac i'm kind of partial to that michigan copper um, even the one you brewed that Hydra, that'd probably be a great one for an IPA. Yeah. First that match. may be the best kind of the better one. It's like kind of the highest, uh, and kind of got the most fruitiness going on. Yeah. Aroma wise. Yep. So thank you. Oh, go ahead. John. Cat, cat smashed <laughs> piss. <laughs> Citra IPA. That's my next beer. That's go. what I'm brewing next. <laughs> that one's going to definitely make the site. Yeah, that'll be the September recipe for Trump Club. <laughs> the pi- the no piss the You're off, not getting a choice. Uh, you don't get a choice. One, there's no options in September. <laughs> P- 
pissed off cat smash IPA. Yeah. That's the name of. It. Oh, you could do great graphics for that. Josh. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have a great time. Yeah, and we know it's Citra, so uh, <laughs> people will like it. We'll have a good time with that one. So, Adam, thank you so much for submitting your question. This is a great time to remind you if and when we take your question on a future episode, we do give you a twenty five dollar gift card to CatConnection.com, courtesy of Mister Todd Burns, Cat Piss himself. So, moving on to question <laughs> number two, came from our buddy Peter, who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Peter wrote, if I ever bottle my beer, how do I, how full do I need to get the bottles? Should I leave some headspace or can I fill it as high as possible? Peter, why are you buy bottling, man? What's up with that? No, if he's using a beer gun even or bottling at all, Todd, what, what is that? Is you texting your wife a picture? What is this? What, uh, <laughs> uh, everybody can hear that, right? I'm showing how much to leave. Yeah. Yeah, well, I can hear it. So, uh, Todd, Todd <laughs> I'll let, I'll let you lead it, Todd. What is the rule of thumb? Like, of uh, you did you did like it looked like an inch and a half worth of um, headspace. What's the thought process behind uh, the yeah, amount of headspace? Yeah, I, I was I was trying to do like an inch. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's it. You leave a little bit, uh, and then yeah. use. Uh, I like to purge my bottles before I fill, but I'm kidding. I, I don't actually do that. That'd be a lot of work. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how much? I haven't bottled in so long. The last time I bottled, I think I left an inch. Joe, everybody's inch is a little different. So yeah, that's a good point. Um, I mean, the rule of thumb that I've always heard: if you're using a filler, um, so we sell like a half inch and a three eighths inch bottle filler that hooks to tubing, you know. And the idea is that's going to go to the bottom of the bottle and fill from the bottom, so you're not splashing it in, aerating it as you're filling. And then you fill it to the top with that in there and the dispersion of pulling that tube out, um, dispersion or displacement, uh, it leaves just enough headspace for you to cap it. So that's kind of always been the rule of thumb that I used. And I think with the beer gun, that displacement, again, of pulling that that rod back out of the bottle is going to leave just enough headspace. But if you look at like your commercial beers on the shelf in, in long necks, you'll see that there's about an inch, maybe an inch and a half at the most so he's, of headspace he's- there. He's got his hand out and he's showing us like four inches. <laughs> well, I'm just. Did yeah. you see that? We, yeah. we should take a screenshot of that's, that. That's he's my like, inch. You know, about, about an inch. <laughs> I'm going to say, inch, when Todd, inch, an inch yeah. or an inch and a half yeah. or so. When yeah. Todd was doing You don't want the whole neck empty. It's going to go up maybe about half the neck or so. Yeah. Yeah. Todd, the obvious joke to make is if I had my wife fill the bottles, she'd say <laughs> she she would hardly have any beer in there. Cause yeah, that's, uh, that's all that's th- two inches honey or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know, like you said, Joe, you took, you took the words out of my mouth in regards to when we, my dad and I used the Blickman beer gun, fantastic yeah. product to do filling from a keg. We fill it like you said, pretty much to the top because the displacement take it out and boom, it's perfect. We cap it. And that also that beer gun, my favorite part about it, which I think actual counter pressure bottle fillers have this function too, perhaps of purging when like you purge the bottle completely and then fill is part of the, flow that's a nice thing about it's the beer so nice. yeah that's it's like so it's nice. big advantage and, right? and that's kept my you know when we do bottle for gifting or for preserving or whatever um opening them up like we opened up la on thanksgiving the batch the years prior batch of um uh breakfast stout of the imperial oh, coffee nice. stout it was yeah, and yeah. it was incredible my dad was like I wish we had that batch Still again on tap. Yeah, it was yeah, perfectly yeah. carbonated. The flat and everything was, it was great. And I, and I attribute it to just how easy it is using the beer gun for that. Sure. And Blickman, every time I say beer gun, they give me $3. So beer gun, beer gun, but <laughs> no, no, they don't. I've tried to get John answer my phone, man. Answer my phone calls. Um, I, I do love that product. Blickman makes great products and the beer gun's my favorite, but anyway, yeah, Peter, um, if you're bottling like from the beginning, you're doing the uh, actual, you know, priming sugar solution and all that, Joe, the, the rule still stays the same in regards to how it much does. Space. Yes. Yep. So most of the time, the apparatus that you're filling the bottles with leaves, you know, fill it to the top with that in there, pull that out. And that displacement should be kind of right on the money. Perfect. I just want to get that clarified because if people are like, no, oh, he's talking about actually bottling you dummies. He's not talking about, like, well, yeah. The, right. You're From still, the keg. I mean, it yeah. works about the same. It works think, the same. Yeah. You're still using yeah. some apparatus. Even though, right. I think it probably matters more when you're filling with priming sugar because you do have that conditioning going on. Oh, Whereas yeah. when you're filling from the keg, it's just already carbonated. It's not really, 
anything going on in there except storage. Yeah, so in y'all's opinion, I imagine it does actually matter a bit more. In y'all's opinion, if you are doing the priming sugar, are you more likely to have a, a bottle bomb if you don't leave enough headspace for that? Carb- yes. Right. I mean, isn't that the yes. isn't that the thought? Like, if you don't, leave uh, enough from my head- understanding, yeah. yeah, you need a little bit of headspace um, in each bottle, uh, not only to kind of like store that CO two mm-hmm. so it can get absorbed back into the liquid um i think mainly that you know. I, I have a theory i have a theory on that too I, I thought about this the last time i bottled you know we always say we're brewing five gallon batches but then we never actually end up with a five gallon batch or very rarely right because you have loss and everything sure, else sure. i think we always have that pack is it five ounces of sugar that we put yeah. in with the five gallons. I'm pretty convinced most of the time where I've made a mistake is Over-prime. I ended up with three and a half gallons of or four gallons and I put the whole thing in and, and probably overprimed it because uh, my limited, limited bottling experience is that well, the last one I did, we are, remember they're oh, over carbonated. Yeah. Well, we, there's also <laughs> people that say you don't even need a whole ounce per gallon. Um, right. That's usually like a good rule of thumb. But yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good point you brought up. If you do, you know, a lot of times shooting for five, you end up with four or four and a half, and um, something to consider when that, you're adding that sugar. Absolutely, that grapefruit IPA. God, that's a great beer, it and is. I still have some in the in the fridge, Josh. We should have one tonight. Okay, but to have one, you have to open the bottle. And set it down and leave it for 30, 45 minutes. And then drink. you can leave it in the fridge and then yeah. drink it. But it's there, last, yeah, last so, winter yeah. when it was cool outside, I would walk up and put it on the wall of my house and leave it and have a beer. And then when I had my second beer, I'd have that because it was, so <laughs> it was pretty funny. That's yeah. what I do sometimes when I, uh, Brookshires doesn't ever keep their good beer in the fridge. It makes yeah. me so mad. So I'll, I'll buy, you know, the good beer and then I'll put one in the freezer. Uh, you know, and, and then once that's cold, I'll drink it and swap, put another one in the freezer. <laughs> yeah. And then you wake up in the morning and oh, yeah. <laughs> crap all over <laughs> yeah. your freezer. Cause that uh, last one, you forgot. You inevitably forget one, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, you know, Todd, that I did take a couple of your, the bottles of your grapefruit I pay last year to the beach trip. And um, I do remember that it opening and being like, oh, crap, I got I forgot. OK, 20 minutes and we'll serve that one. Let me go have another fruit or two and then, OK, come back to it so I can pour it without it just being a overcarbonated mess. He actually had shared that beer with a contractor friend of his when he visited. Remember the guy he tasted it, goes, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how how carbonated yeah, it was. That but. that grapefruit citrus hot burst is not for everybody. Especially oh, if you're not so, ready for it though. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. That's Ocarina, it right? It was yes. yes. I think Texas grapefruit on K Connection and it, Ocarina okay. on Home yeah. Brewing. It's an incredible yeah, recipe. That. It is. And uh yeah. we have a lot of uh listeners who have told me that's their favorite recipe on our whole site. Like grapefruit. When I brewed popular. it the first time, like we I brewed it almost like right after Lorena kind of threw it together. Um when we we got that grandfather unit for the brick and mortar shop in San Marcos. And I brewed it on there just like as I was working the shop, you know, and we I kegged it up, you know, fermented kegged it. And we did this little tasting party with like a milk stout and something like a half a wisen. And I had mine in there on the side. And I was like, if y'all want something real good, like, come, <laughs> come get a little of this IVA. And yeah, it was like, it was, it became my favorite recipe that we sold like that, yeah. you know, it was loaded the keg at that party. I'm sure <laughs> close, close to it. No, I, I made sure that didn't happen. <laughs> You're like, Oh, it's out guys it's out right yeah. anyways um peter yeah like like they said um if you're doing it with an apparatus uh, to the top let it out let the displacement happen <laughs> cap it and you're good and if you have your own way people listening leave it in the comments below and we'll include it on sure. a future or i say that todd wants you to leave it as a voicemail at 325-305-6107 and i will play it on a future episode and give you your gift card so uh, i i think it's really funny because when that when I read that question, I, I, yeah, I was reading the questions right as the show was starting. I saw that question. And I thought, yeah, that's going to take like 30 seconds to answer. And it took like nine minutes. <laughs> we, can, we, we can stretch anything out. Man. I can. That's the story of my life. But anyways, thank you, Peter, for submitting the question. Moving on to question number three. It came from our buddy Jason, who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Jason wrote, I brewed a batch of the Brian's Kolsch after hearing Josh talk it up like crazy. I understand why now, because it really is an incredible beer, so much so that I bought a second kit and brewed it. When I kegged and, uh, when I kegged and carbonated it, I was a little surprised that the second batch is just a tad sweeter than my first. All of my numbers were basically identical, and they both had the exact same fermentation environment. 
same recipe, same yeast, same fermentation bucket, same fermentation temperature, so on and so on. What do you think might have caused this to have happened? Well, Jason, I'm going to take a stab. Um, And y'all correct me, guys, because y'all are much more experienced brewers than I am. I would say that you were probably more, you were closer, how did he word it, to basically identical than actually, like, it's very rare for a home brewer to be actually identical one for one on any given brew day without some really high, you know, good, nice uh, automated type of equipment, or automated is the wrong word, electric equipment to to help you dial stuff in. My dad and I can use the same thermometer any given brew day, and depending on where you place it, the exact spot, like in our mash tun, you get a reading a couple degrees off any given spot. So I'd imagine what happened was you, you, you know, you might have been right on the money in the fermentation temperature, but his mash might have been a little bit warm, right, Joe? Like, it, like if he was just even a few degrees hotter than he actually thought he was, wouldn't that possibly have caused? Yeah, the- it could. Sure, um, mashing too hot or like a little bit too hot, even. Um, what does it create? Is it like a I don't want to, I might be wrong. Alpha beta, beta sugars. Beta. Yeah. yeah. So you have some, the higher you mash, the more, the harder certain sugars are created to ferment. So that may be what happened is just like you had some either hot spots or you maybe just uh, mash got a little warm at one point and created some sugars that were less fermentable ended up being a little bit of residual sweetness at the final product could have been a yeast thing where even though you use the same yeast and you fermented all at the same mm-hmm. conditions, maybe it was a month or two older or, um, so maybe it got a little high shipping yeah, and yeah. have, yeah, some viability issues, um, to where it fermented, but not quite like it needed to, to really rip all the sugars out correctly. I mean, usually that shows up in your final gravity, you know, numbers, you'll be able to tell a little bit there. Um, so, it, you know, it's hard to say, it's hard to pinpoint, obviously, exactly what may have caused it. But there's definitely, you know, a few things you can look at to see it to, to say that this may have been the reason this may have been the reason and kind of just like keep that in mind moving forward on future batches. And Todd, would you say, cause we've talked about it, I think even on the show, would you say you have found it easier to brew your beer, your recipes consistently to the last r- way you brewed it on your herm setup versus when you were doing like a cooler setup or, or a stovetop setup? Or, or do you find like the three vessel herms kind of systems has enabled you to be more consistent or do you think it's all in fermentation or all of the above? Like how do you, what do you recommend for consistent batches of beer? No, I, I definitely, I mean, it's so easy to keep it on temperature and you can usually be very, very consistent, particularly if you're brewing on the same Herm system and you brew the same way each time, it should be pretty consistent. I I would have to agree with you, Josh. I think he was probably a little more in the alpha range than he realized when he was, when he was doing that. And that's, that's what made it a little sweeter, but uh, I mean that's that's a guess, but that's well, and he did uh, say you know he, he did say a tad sweeter, so meaning he didn't have to be that much above it. You know what no. I mean? He didn't say like, oh my god, it's sugar water. What well, happened? Right. Like, well, J- uh, J- James mocks me for using three thermometers in three different places, and because <laughs> it's funny, and, and that when I'm mashing and <laughs> and checking it every sixteen seconds. But yeah, I mean, it, if you just get a little bit off on the temperature, it can change it. But it's interesting. I, I wonder if he would have noticed it if he hadn't have brewed two batches in a row. In other words, Uh if it wasn't much sweeter at all, it was, it was probably great beer. And it just, I mean, that would be my guess. Yeah. Right. You know what? I've never, I've, I've had commercial beers. I won't name drop them. They're, they're in Texas though. And I remember I told you it was a lager. It's a German lager. And, uh, there, this batch of cans I had, Joe, this case of cans was very, very different from, uh, last time we had bought a case of their Mm -hmm. cans. And so it happens even at microbrewery levels, right? Where it's not a hundred percent one for one. And you know, it's, it's most of the time they have that figured out where it is, but not everyone could be Anheuser-Busch, right? Where it's a laboratory brewing environment and it's Skynet watching over there. The I was going to say they have multiple people on salary just looking at the science behind it. Yeah, it's it's different on, on a micro or even like a craft brewery scale for sure. Yeah. So- yeah there's definitely, I've, I was at Brooklyn Brewery one time and I'll, 
did a tour and I walked up to the guy and I was like, you know, I love your, I love the Brooklyn log. I don't remember if it was a Brooklyn lager may have been a different recipe, but it was one of the recipes I really liked. This was years ago. And I, I said, you know, I love this beer. And I went on and on about it and I go, but you know, I live in, no, I didn't. I said, I, we had a six pack or so the other day and it really tasted different. It was, I, you know, we, we didn't care for it. It didn't seem right. I'm wondering if you're having a problem with the delivery, blah, blah, blah. And he just face just kind of went down and he was like, yeah, we, are you in Texas? And I was like, yeah, how'd you know that besides the accent? <laughs> and he said, uh, yeah, we had an issue in Texas with that beer and we had to pour an enormous amount of it out. No uh, way. Feel and bad. recall it. So he's, you know, it, it happens to every, it happens to professional yeah. breweries. And that's a great brewery, by the way. I mean, it, it, for them to, they're usually extremely consistent, but you know, he, they had a, somebody else I'm sure was brewing it for him in Texas and those damn yeah. Texans, they messed it up, you know? Well, like you said, Todd, um, if he hadn't have brewed it immediately after the first batch, maybe he wouldn't have noticed it or, it right, been, right. or he maybe, you know, I say that, I don't know. Uh, he might be like James where James will brew like a delicious, uh, pilsner german pilsner and i'll he'll try give it to me and go oh that tastes just like the last time he did goes really because here's what i think's wrong with it and then yeah or it's like he has like an exact taste in his mind right if it doesn't match every you know check every single one of those boxes yes yeah yeah some brewers super self-critical some brewers are their worst critics where sure it's good i think it's a good way to be absolutely but me and my dad are if it's potable oh we're drinking it like if it tastes like you did last batch i don't remember you know, <laughs> some sure. of them are obviously different, but the Brian's Kolsch, I haven't brewed it yet, but I got to try the original. So did all three of us did. That was a phenomenal Kolsch. Yes, I, it was. I, I should brew that batch myself because, uh, or I should have James do it because I can't brew a Kolsch. I've been messing them up, but I, I really enjoyed drinking the original. That's one beer. I need to talk Brian into just sending it to me annually. You, you, dude, you messed up one batch of Kolsch. I, I mean, know. Come I'm, on. I'm, I know. I'm going to see a sports psychologist about it. I think. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get some help. God. Well, you just <laughs> brew more and shut up about it. I mean, you messed it up one time. Come on. Yeah. You, you, you got you in my head, some though. really good batches, too. I, I, yeah, but you, I think, told me it was the worst thing you've ever had. I forgot the way you worded it, but you, you really got under my skin sometimes man you know yeah but that uh founders that you brewed that thing was on Uh, point yeah i appreciate that and thankfully we had two consistent years of it being good to where i'm like okay we can do that because i was worried this year i was like i'm gonna screw it up i know i'm gonna screw it up but um we didn't thankfully so Todd, you really, you know, you gotta watch what you say to me. I'm soft. I'm, I'm fragile. <laughs> I'm a, I, I, the estrogen in my blood is increasing with as my girls are aging. Four women in my house, man, it's affecting me. At least I have a boy dog, but we did. Just- I didn't really think the founders was good this year. <laughs> <laughs> you're a big jerk were you going yeah were you going for the the brown ale this year or was it yeah what are you the- talking- oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was good that was good you are conv- oh. you're a convincing jerk like todd that was good uh jason thank you so much for submitting your question and again like i say on every question i really do want to hear feedback because some people might have some insight that we don't have in regards to like actually you know what i've done this before and here's what i changed up or here's where i take my temperature during the match if you're using a, a cooler mash tun or if you you know I, there's a lot of factors that jason can maybe divulge to me or people can offer insight in the comments or todd's preferred method the voicemail at 325-305-6107 last question for this week's show came from a brian not brian's coach brian but a very important brian still i'm sure who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com he wrote Trub Club member here. Don't tell Todd that I actually liked it when we were called the Super Duper Club. Eh? Uh, Trub Club is nice too. Since I've been receiving kits from you guys, I have been able to share a nice variety of beers with my friends, and they actually think I'm a decent brewer now, so I have to say thank you for that. I joined in November, and I didn't think at the time about how different shipping conditions could be come summer. When I received my Kolsch kit, the pack of Dieter was pretty swollen. I did notice the two ice packs, so I'm sure it could have been worse. Do you suggest I use this pack of yeast as is, or should I make a starter to be safe? Now, he wrote this in 
this was last month, June's recipes, and we've helped him out. But I wanted to, I told my teacher on the show because whether you're in yeah, our Trump good club, question. yeah, whether you're in our Trump club or not, there's a good chance if you have liquid yeast shipped to you and you're not a town or two over from that place that you've experienced this as well, that, that, that you get a little swollenness in the pack when you receive it and now you start questioning viability. Joe, this is probably customer service question 101 to you during the summer. Yeah, so what what, sure, what do you sure. have to offer Brian in regards to a swollen um, pack? So a good rule of thumb to keep in mind is some slight swelling is completely normal and it's attributed. It's like why yeast number one frequently asked question. It's attributed to CO2 off gassing um, and it's, it's going to happen. Um, just a, a bit of slight swelling. Now, if the package looks like it's about to pop, it's going to be a bit more concerning. Um, that's when you would want to reach out to the people you bought it from. If you've got the stuff, if you've got the gear to make a starter, I would recommend it. Um, that'll let you know within 24, 36 hours, even sooner, probably whether or not it's going to be viable. The other thing is, I don't know how much I might be, I might be wrong on this, at least partially. I don't know how much it's going to, uh, negatively affect your beer. If you pitch yeast and it ends up not fermenting, as long as you can get more yeast pitch to get that fermentation going. I'm not sure that that yeast that is either dead or just non-viable that just floats straight to the bottom and sits on the bottom. If it actually is going to impart any off flavors. Now, if it sits in there for a month or two, um, then, then likely it will. But again, just a normal fermentation cycle. I think you, I think you're going to be just fine. Um, and then we're, we're pretty good about either getting you a replacement liquid yeast. If you've got big issues, you know, with your packet, right. uh, either, you know, FedEx two date or a pack of dry yeast as just to get something in there quick, get it fermenting. We can, we're, you know, obviously we're willing to work with you if, if you've got issues. On, uh, and for, I, for I, be, us, I believe, Joe, you've even added the disclaimer on yeast orders like uh, you they all first off, all liquid yeast ships out with at least one pack just as a given. No extra we, charge. Yeah. You have yeah, a disclaimer. So liquid yeast orders. Yes, they will ship out with an ice pack. During the summer, I mean, even during the winter, those ice packs, they just, they're just, it's not dry ice. It's um, its colder than ice, you know, but they're they are the gel freezer packs and they don't last more than a two days probably on the road in the heat and especially in the heat like this. So um, mo- fortunately, FedEx is usually good about a three, maybe four day delivery at the most for most of the, you know, continental US. So we're, we're pretty lucky in that regard. Um, so we don't have a ton of issues normally. Now, again, you know, during the summer months, there is, it is a bit more frequent, Mm -hmm. um, but usually, yeah, usually we we pack it, you know, we insulate it as much as we can with like wrapping it up, snuggling it up with the ice pack and wrapping it up. And then on all, like all the recipes and stuff, you're able to add extra ice pack. So there's definitely some options there. Um, and we're going to continue to look, um, at, at more options as they kind of, as we can, as we can. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's an unfortunate reality for liquid yeast in the summer. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the but. Well, and and I, that's one of the big, sorry to interrupt you, but that's yeah. one of the big reasons we don't automatically charge you for yeast on each recipe. If you want to pick it up locally, yep. if you want to harvest it from your previous batch, we totally get that. Um, or or a dry yeah, yeast, too. We, yeah, exactly. If you've got extra dry yeast, exactly, that kind of thing. We don't automatically include yeast and charge you for it on your on your recipe orders from us. Yeah, you know, I could, Todd, we could uh, reach out to our friend Casey over there at Imperial, and she probably has some insight as to like uh, what what people can or should do, and maybe the severity because it is like Joe said, it goes from normal swelling to that's about to pop, and there's every other in between to where yeah. um, I've seen some people that we have some Trub Club members up in like Maine. And if it ships out on a Monday, it usually gets to them on Friday or sometimes Saturday. And in the summer, they'll show me like, is this viable? Let me know. The Kolsch one specifically, it worked out fine for them. But like, yeah. And like you said, uh, some people don't want to gamble, but. And I say gamble. Some people, to them, you know, the the more swollen the pack is, the least confident they are in it. Sure. But and you know, you can't blame people if they're going to pay for the yeast. They're going to pay for shipping. Yep. You know, they expect. They Absolutely. expect it to arrive ready to go. So, yep. uh, you know, you can't blame the customer by any means. Yeah. Oh, I do, though. Uh, frequently. No, <laughs> that's why Todd doesn't have me answer the phones anymore. I'm like, well, that's your problem, dumb dumb, is what I say. That's not my Todd. It's impression. just rough because, you know, margins in general on liquid yeast, is they're slim. Uh, packing material, the ice packs, they're expensive. It's like it's, you can only do so much without having to charge more for the yeast, you know. 
Yeah, we. I mean, we lose money on yeast as yeah. a company. I could tell you that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But in the same breath, I love liquid yeast. <laughs> like I'm, I'm spoiled to take it home with me from our our walk-in cooler. Like I have, I have the best absolute environment you can to take it home. And because by my three and a half hour drive, it's still fine, right? I, oh, I yeah. With the rice pats are perfect. I put it in the fridge when I get home, and it's great. I love Imperial, and they don't pay me to say that. But um, they do. I remember when I first started, we would get stuff from San Antonio. We lived in San Marcos, and I was like, "Man, is that yeast gonna die by the time I get home? Like, (laughs) I better bring ice chest." You know, the guys at the store were like, "Dude, you're fine. It's like a less than an hour drive. Like, come on, (laughs) relax. Don't worry. Have a home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like while I'm driving, have a home. Yeah, should I have a yeah? (laughs) Well, (laughs) out. I'm not look. Well, I'm not pointing fingers, but sometimes when I'm taking the uh, Polaris between properties, going to visit his dad, I might have a beer in my hand. Okay, <laughs> don't pull me over. But, but we don't get on the road. No, yeah. right. no, 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 no. Just just the back roads where it's totally safe. And <laughs> no, we don't drive drink and drive, guys. And kids listen. What, what I mean is, it's not a public road. It's privately owned. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, right. ha- having, so, so having that's it now completely legal. I, when my mom, well, pardon me. I don't know if my dad's going to watch this while we're at the beach. So. I won't have to get confronted by my mom. Did you just say you drink and drive? Blah, 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 blah. No, uh, no Ma, I didn't say that at all. It was a joke. Uh, you know, Joe deals with this issue all the time. So I don't have much to say other than Joe's responsible for homebrew shipping these orders yeah. and he's responsible for the liquid yeast. So if you do receive it and it's not right, it's definitely Joe's fault. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah. And then I'll yell at Chelly Araceli. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it trickles down. Yeah. That's She'll what, take it home to her dog. Yeah. I was going to say, when Todd, Todd yells at me, I go home and yell at my kids. It's a, <laughs> And then they yell at poor Murray. That's why I brought right. him on the trip. Yep. I turned the camera, but he's, he is not out. Um, Anyways, Brian, that, that is a good question, though. Because and, and first off, thank you so much for joining the Trub Club. We do, everybody who's in it, regardless of what tier you're at, uh, we appreciate it. And and those who, who stick with us, and even those who, who leave, but they're still interactive, we appreciate our community. I say this all the time. Y'all are the best ever. And I need to get like one of those credit scrolls at the end of every episode to show our, our current Trub Club members so, as a you know, gesture of appreciation, because some other channels that i follow like in the disc golf realm i'm a real big fan of the channel jomez pro and this is yeah, where i saw and at the end of their show they're, they're, from, like, they're from uh san angelo no way jomez pro yeah. is no way yeah. i had no brandon, idea brandon the guy who used to work for me yeah. he was good buddies with that guy who started that company i had no no way yeah, yeah him and his Pretty brother cool. right uh, yeah yeah they 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 cover all these events really yeah really they're good. really awesome and so i've the been watching them stuff. yeah they're incredible but they at the end scroll up all their patreon supporters and all that at the different tiers i'm like Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, we need to do that because we, again, I say it all the time, how much we appreciate them. I should show it a little bit more than just like the uh, random sticker of Todd with the broken hydrometer that I'll mail out every now and then. But anyway, guys, that's all I've got for this week's show. I really appreciate y'all's time doing this because, again, I did not want to record from the beach like James did for last week's episode. Uh, So thank you all for saving me some time. I appreciate it. And Joe, we'll have you on again sooner than later. Sounds good. Pleasure. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page, or now you can call or text them into 325-305-6107. If you're wanting to take your brewing to the next level, go check out the sweet new Herm system available now at browtog.com or go directly to ketconnection.com forward slash browtog and take advantage of the incredible introductory offer going on for a limited time. On behalf of Todd Burns, Joe Ermis, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening.